Uh, I'll now declare the council meeting for Tuesday, May the 19th in session and ask if there's any conflict of interest amongst the council members. Nope. Thank you very much. And uh, I'll now turn it, turn it over to our clerk. Item four. Item four, adoption of published agenda for Tuesday, May 19th, 2015. Moved by Council of Oaks, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions? Yes, from the clerk. Through your worship, I have the addition of the request from Russ Phillips, Chief Administrative Officer, to discuss two-tier hydro rates across Essex County no longer being acceptable. Thank you. Councilor Caxero. Uh, yes. I would like to add also... Uh, I've got uh, an issue uh, with regards to parking along the walkway on Dunn. Uh, and I'd like to um, speak to Council with regards to there was some interest in uh, an OPP ride along for Council members. I want to bring that up also. Thank you, sir. Anything else? Thank you. Item 5, Adoption of Minutes, May 4th, 2015, Regular Council Meeting. Support. Moved by Councilor Bonney, supported by Councilor Snively. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. B, April 20th, 2015, Special Council Meeting. Councilor Snively moves, supported by Councilor Bonney. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item C, April 20th, 2015, Special Council Meeting. Moved by Councillor Caxero, supported by Deputy Mayor Malosh. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item D, April 20th, 2015, Special Council Meeting. Deputy Mayor Malosh moves, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. <coughs> Item E, May 4th, 2015, Special Council Meeting. By Councilor Bondi, supported by Councilor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. And Item F, May 11th, 2015, Special Council Meeting. By Councilor Snively, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item six, public presentations. I'd like to call forward Sanders Smeltzer from Harrow District High School, please. I'm gonna sit here and I'll be right out to see you shortly. I'm, I'm gonna read this over the mic so everybody can surely hear me. Welcome, young lady. <laughs> we have a very special person here, special for all of Canada. But anyways, Ms. Smelser attends Harrow District High School and is being recognized as one of Canada's elite grade 12 students. She is the first female student and only the second student from Essex County to receive one of the 50 coveted Schoolage Leader Scholarships given out annually across Canada. You face them people. The Schoolage Leader Scholarship is aimed at promoting student interest in studying SDEM science, technology, engineering, or math. And uh, boy, we're blessed to have someone in our own municipality receive one of these coveted gifts. So it gives me great honor on behalf of our municipality and the town council to present you, Ms. Smelcher, with this certificate. Mr. Mayor, after you're done, can all of Council join you too for her memory book? After you're done, can all of Council join you for picture? Thank you. Okay, Council, you're coming. 
Papers on top of your this. See, it only the first two. The young lady said she wants to get into engineering, so maybe we'll have our own engineer in Essex one day. <laughs> Two. Two. I know, but she's a long ways away. Yeah. But aren't you trying to move up? <laughs> After you, Chris, is what I meant. Oh, boy. <laughs> Eight reports from administration. A, corporate services, report number clerk 2015-005. And it's the appointment of three council members to the recorded revision for the Beneteau Drain, Beth Rushla Bridge, Beneteau Drain, new maintenance schedule of assessment, and South Town Line Drain for Anthony Aria. Councilor Bondi? Need a motion. Yeah, motion to receive. Uh, to receive. Okay, Councilor Bondi, supported by Councilor Caxero. Now you need three. Yeah. Okay, Councilor Bondi says she will sit on this. Councilor Caxero and Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you very much. All in favor? Those three? Motion carries. Thank you. Item B, Building Department Report number 2015-04, which is the April 2015 Building Department Report. Moved by Councilor Caxero, supported by Councilor Vokes. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. C, Community Services, report number 2015-014, the Life Saving Society Affiliate Recognition Awards. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councilor Snively. Any questions? Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you, through your worship, to uh, Cynthia Kickbright. What makes you guys so successful? This is ongoing, year after year. If I may answer that for you, it's one word, two, two letters, us. No. Go ahead, Cynthia. You've got to answer them. I don't expect you to give any trade secrets away. We don't want anybody else uh, <laughs> using the same tactics. So, good job. How about Mr. Sweet giving us the answer? To your worship, I think as it shows with the four people here from our area, it's teamwork. Um, they put, take a lot of pride in their job. And when our size of municipality, when we rate in the top five in these four categories, it's pretty amazing. So, that's not by luck. It's hard work, and they go and uh, 
people come back. That's what you want. It's not just one time they come back. So it's a team we have here, and I want to thank you guys publicly for everything you guys do. Councillor Cactero? Yeah, I'll, I'll certainly echo that. Um, uh, I haven't been on council for eight years, and I know my kids have been involved in the swimming programs uh, at, the, at the pool there. Not, uh, not necessarily uh, lifeguarding, per se, because they, they weren't to that level, but um, very professional there at the pool. Uh, great staff, uh, very good instructors. Uh, my kids enjoy themselves tremendously, so uh, kudos to the staff, to all the staff, not just uh, the upper upper staff, uh, the, the front line staff also, they do a great job. They're, uh, they're obviously trained well, and uh, we do have a very, very good program here in Essex. Thank you. Councillor Vokes. Thank you, Your Worship. I was actually sidebarring with the uh, the recipients tonight, and I was I guess I was kidding them a little bit, but outside of the kidding and looking at you straight up, and as a councilman in the town of Essex, all kidding aside, I know the work you do, and that's why I took the opportunity to kid with you about it, because I truly know the work you do, and you're just harvesting your rewards, and, and very, very rightly so, and I got a great appreciation for what you do for myself as a councilman in one, Ward 1, make no mistake about that, so... Kudos to obvious Cynthia and, and all of you under working under the direction of Doug. Thanks again. Much appreciated. Mr. Sweet. Um, not to hold this up, but through your worship, we do have two of the awards. If maybe if you could have a photo opportunity with uh, the staff for that. Can we get in on that one too? <laughs> okay. Favor the motion. <laughs> motion carries. Item D, Community Services, report number 2015-015. June is Recreation and Parks Month. Moved by Council of Oaks and uh, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions? All in favor. Motion carries. Item E, Community Services, report number 2015-0116, which is the Special Events Resource Team May Update. Moved by Councillor Caxero, supported by Councillor Snively. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item F, Planning Department, report number 2015-018. Town of Essex Heritage Committee. Country Cax Arrow moves, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item G, Infrastructure and Development, report number 2015-02. Investigation into a basement flooding prevention subsidy program. Moved by Councillor Caxero, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item H, Corporate Services requests to Council to waive requirements for proposals, tenders, and quotations for the water and wastewater rate study financial plan for water and wastewater license buy-in fees and basement flooding prevention subsidy program. Moved by Councilor Keck, or Bjorkman, supported by Councilor Bondi. Any questions? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries. 
I, Corporate Services, Report Number Clerk 2015-006, and this is the results of the 2015 Land for Rent Quotes. Moved by Councillor Bjorkman, supported by Councillor Snively. Any questions? Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you. Through you, Your Worship, to um, RCAO, Mr. Phillips. I'm just wondering on this, sir, on this one here, um, if we decide to, that we've got something to do with that land, is there, is there a way of us uh, getting out of that contract for the year? And the reason why I'm asking is because of the uh, master plan, recreation and parks master plan coming out. Yes, sir. Uh, through you, Your Worship. Um, I'm not specific with the terms of the, I did re, I do recall seeing it, Councillor, but I think on this one I would defer to those that wrote it. Mr. Nepsey? Yeah, through your worship. Uh, the lease is for a year. Uh, in, in speaking with uh, Doug regarding the master plan and that area there, um, I don't think in our discussions that that area south of the sewage plant, south of the solar panels right now is, is because we filled in and put the solar panels in that lagoon, that area as far as a recreation future use uh, isn't the, I guess, um, out in the stand out front as it was originally. Uh, so I don't see there being a need. Also, it is only for a year, the lease, and this master plan, by the time we go through the process and, and uh, um, take care of it, you'd be, you know, we're, we're pushing the latter part of the year. So I don't see this growing season as, uh, as an issue for future use of that land at all. Thank you, Your Worship. Yep. Thank you. Any further? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Nine correspondence. First item A, teachers of English as a second language, asking that council proclaim November 8th to the 14th, 2015, as teachers of English as a second language week. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councilor Caxero. Any questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item B, Ministry of Citizenship, Immigration and International Trade, Ontario Medal for Good Citizenship. Moved by Councilor Snively and Councilor Caxero. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carried. And item C, Councillor Bondi requested to speak about the Supreme Court rules against prayer at city council meetings. Oh, by Councillor Bondi. Oh, I just want to say oh. I withdraw my correspondence and. Oh. Uh, but if we are to bring an opening statement back to council, I think that council should have an open discussion about it and agree on what we're going to talk about. But since we don't have an opening statement now, my uh, email's mute point. Yep. Mr. Phillip, I have a word to say about that one, but uh, do we have to? Okay. Thank you. Item D, Essex Windsor Solid Waste Authority reports. The first one is the 2013-2014 Biennial Monitoring Program Report for the Windsor-Essex Regional Landfill. The second one is Essex Regional Residential Waste Diversion 2014 Report. And the third one is the Essex-Windsor Regional Landfill 2014 Operations Report. Country Cag Chair will move. Mo motion to receive all three. Country Bondi, any questions? All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item E is a letter from Lawrence Vigneau regarding the speed limit on Gibbon Road or Snake Lane. Moved by Councillor Snively, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash, Councillor Snively. Um, I'm the one that was involved with this from day one. Um, I had a call from these people and uh, uh, just going back to uh, if I can ask Chris this uh, when you're coming off a given road okay and you're you're coming up to 
snake lane itself at the intersection that goes into the subdivision is is there going to be a posted sign there when you turn right onto uh, onto the road their concern was their main concern was those first two curves and uh, just add to that uh, we we see here it's got posted 50 I, I think we'd be okay at 60 60 kilometers an hour there thank you I'm yes Chris uh, three worship yeah um, the law is pres it's very prescriptive as well as, as far as the signs go when you're entering onto a street and a, a new speed limit is there so the distances are all set uh, I would imagine as you turn off of uh, you know, Walnut are given onto Snake Lane. Uh, there is a set distance from where that uh, 60 ahead and, and 60 uh, kilometers an hour sign would be both on the north and the south ends. And then along the way, uh, certain distances, there would be uh, speed limit signs as well uh, as far as uh, the 60 kilometer an hour. So, um, but uh, as far as reducing to 60 kilometers, I have no objection. I, I don't necessarily believe, and, and Councillor Snively and I have discussed this, I don't necessarily believe it'll um, decrease the, the incidence uh, if someone's traveling too fast in those corners. The real issue is with those 90 degree corners. Um, but um, it will definitely, uh, uh, I guess, help to lower speeds on the entire stretch of road. Um, but uh, again, I have no issues with reducing it to 60. I think 50 is pushing it, but 60 would be uh, would be adequate. Councillor Schneebly. Yeah, through your worship, uh, there is signs uh, posted there. I don't know where they come from, Chris. Um, uh, 20Ks uh, right right at the curves, right before the curves. There, there's uh, signs in both directions. 20Ks. Those will stay, won't they? We will not remove those signs, will we? Through your worship, those aren't speed limit signs. Those are the, the yellow and black ones that are the warning signs. So those aren't the actual speed limit. Those are uh, um, an indication of, a, of a, 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 I guess, a, a recommended speed entering the corner. And those are also set by uh, the Ontario Traffic Council as far as, uh, you know, with the checkerboards and any of our signs, there's set distances. So those signs will definitely stay. Uh, we're going to do a review as we're updating the uh, if, if this passes tonight, we'll update the speed limits and do a review of those corners to make sure that we're uh, um, uh, up to code, I guess, up to snuff with all of those uh, warning signs as well. So. Thank you, Chris. Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you. Through you, your worship, to, uh, to Mr. Nepsey. I, I'm wondering if we added dangerous curves even to the uh, those 20 kilometer an hour zine, uh, zone signs uh, that indicate you should be going 20 kilometers an hour around those curves. If we put dangerous curves on them, I've seen those uh, in other municipalities up north. I've, ne I've never seen them around here, but uh, on, it gives everybody an idea that yeah, I, I should really be watching. Particularly uh, since we get a lot of tourists now that head out in that direction because of the wine country thing going on. That uh, maybe it would be wise. I'm just thought, wondering your thoughts on it. Uh, through your, your worship, we'll take a look as well. Uh, um, like I said, there are very set signs that are used in accordance with the Ontario Traffic Council and the MTO, um, and you have to be careful, I guess, uh, addressing things that uh, you know might increase our liability one way or another. But we'll definitely be um, the signage that will be there will be, you know, uh, definitely conservative and in accordance with code, I guess, above and beyond. Thank you. Thank you. All in favor? Motion carries. Item F is a request from Tracy Pilon Abs to sit on the town's committees. Deputy Mayor Malash and Councillor Snively. Any questions? All in favor? Yeah. Thank you. Item G, Committee of Adjustment, the May 26, 2015 meeting agenda. Moved by Councillor Bunny and supported by Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 10, committee meeting minutes. 
The first one is Communities in Bloom Committee meeting from April 28th, 2015. Moved by Council Vogue, supported by Councilor Smiley. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item B, Personnel Committee meeting April 29th, 2015. And there are two recommendations to Council. Moved by Councilor Caxero, supported by Councilor Bondi. Any questions? All in favor of the motion? Motion carries. Item C, the May 4th, 2015 Finance Committee meeting minutes. And there are three recommendations to Council. Moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councilor Bondi. Councilor Bondi. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. With regards to recommendation number two, I think in the near future, Council should have a discussion about the, the direction of what we want to do with downtown lighting in all four centers. Because uh, as we all know, last year, the Christmas lights in Harrow Center were a big debacle and very contentious. And I certainly don't want to go through that this year. So whether we as a Council decide that perhaps in the 2016 budget, we put money away and decide to do Christmas lights for our urban centers and to Colchester and, and McGregor Center, or we as a council decide that the monies for Christmas lights will come out of the chamber or the BIA or beautification funds. I think that's a discussion we should have. Hopefully I'll, I'll bring it up at the next council meeting and then we're not waiting till the last minute where we, we have lights up or we don't have lights up. Being the chamber rep, I need to provide the Harrow Chamber with an answer so that we know, so that the chamber would know going forward too what the wishes and the plans of, of council are. Thank you. Anything further, Council Cacero? <clears throat> to that point, through you, uh, Your Worship, um, I, I'm not so concerned as to where the money's coming from. Uh, as, I mean, obviously, uh, it'd be nice if it, did, it wasn't coming from the, the municipality, but it seems as though that that's usually the case. Uh, I'm more concerned with, with uh, the, the lights being uniform across the municipality. That, that's, to me, um, uh, an important aspect to the whole thing. And that's kind of why at budget I had suggested that <clears throat> maybe going forward we should supply the lights for, for all, all four areas uh, so that they were uniform. But if we can do that without us paying for them, uh, I, I would appreciate that also. Anything further? All in favor? Motion carries. Item D, Essex Police Services Board, May 7th, 2015, meeting minutes. Moved by Councilor Caxero, supported by Councilor Volks. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item 11, bylaw number 1416, being a bylaw to provide for the Beneteau drain bridge for Beth Rushlow. Moved by Councilor Caxero, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item B, bylaw number 1417, being a bylaw to provide for the South Town Line Drain Bridge for Anthony Rhea. Moved by Councilor Snively, supported by Councilor Bondi. Questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item C, bylaw number 14, being a bylaw to provide a new maintenance schedule for assessment for the Beneteau drain. Deputy, moved by Deputy Mayor Malash, supported by Councilor Caxero. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Item D, bylaw number 14, being a bylaw to appoint a Deputy Treasurer for the Town of Essex. Moved by Councillor Bjorkman, supported by Councillor Vokes. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Bylaw number 1420 being a ballot to confirm the proceedings of this evening's council meeting. Moved by Councillor Bondi, supported by Councillor Bjorkman. I'm expecting him to all that. No. All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item 12, Financial A, the March 2015 Bank Payments Report. 
Moved by Councilor Bjorkman, supported by Deputy Mayor Malash. Any questions? Councilor Cacero. Oh, no. All in favor of the motion. Motion carries. Item number 13, under new business, A, Deputy Mayor Malash, regarding wind turbines. Deputy Mayor Malash. Thank you. I'm going to forego the uh, conversation for this evening. Thanks. Thank you very much. Item B, Russ Phillips, Chief Administrative Officer, regarding two-tier hydro rates across Essex County being no longer acceptable. Mr. Phillips. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. Uh, for the attention of Council, um, at last Tuesday, May the 12th, uh, Mayor McDermott and I met with uh, Mayor Gary uh, McNamara uh, and uh, CAO uh, Tony Haddad, along with Ray Tracy. Now, Ray was in that role, was president of the Independent uh, Electrical Distribution Companies uh, group. And uh, Gary tried to take his hat off as mayor of Tecumseh and put his hat on as president of AMO uh, to the largest degree. Um, I shared with you earlier a, a, a briefing note uh, for those of you who have had a chance to look at it or not. The background on it gives the, the sense, and I'll just read it through for you uh, for the purposes of the audience or the gallery. Uh, Elk Energy Inc. and Essex Power Lines Corporation are the local, uh, local distribution companies for Essex County with distribution rates that are approximately 40% lower than Hydro One. Elk and EPLC service approximately 40,000 customers, 62.5%, compared to Hydro One's approximately 25,000 customers of some 37.5%. The province of Ontario recently announced the sell-off of up to 60% of their Hydro One network, known as HONI, and uh, their interests in that and through an IPO. The province also announced the sell-off of Hydro One Brampton to three uh, uh, GTA, local distribution companies, in order to encourage consolidation of, electrical, of the electrical distribution sector. In terms of the current situation, customers in the same community are served by different LDCs at substantially different rates and service levels. Electric, electricity customers are confused and concerned. Now, Ray was giving us background on this, and he had a slide presentation which we can share with Council at a future date. Electricity costs are a primary concern to residents in the industry, and residents in the industry want, uh, sorry, want uh, local accountability for this essential service. And multiple LDCs serving within a single municipality is no longer seen as an efficient or efficient model and it causes confusion. Um, goes on, they spoke quite a bit about the, uh, the city of Ottawa and uh, that they're currently petitioning the province to sell the Hydro One distribution assets to, to Hydro Ottawa. And what the recommendations that we spoke about is to work shoulder to shoulder. I think that was a terminology that was used frequently in that in working side to side, local LDCs who collaborate to create shoulder to shoulder LDCs and buy Hydro One assets should be rewarded with proper incentives. And that electricity customers would benefit from the need to be the most important criteria in any voluntary rationalization. And that LDC ownership remains local and accountable to the regional communities that it serves while maintaining affordable and sustainable distribution rates for all customer classes. What they proposed and what we bring forward to you tonight, that's the Mayor and I, is that a recommendation that the province is encouraged to offer to sell HONI distribution assets to regional, municipally owned LDCs at fair market value. That will create a single LDC for communities creating new customer-driven efficiencies while protecting customers from unreasonable distribution rate increases. As we note that there's a there's the potential on the books right now for a, up to a 19% increase on Hydro One customers. And that's that potential exists for all of our local distribution companies. The thought is that put to the general market, uh, there will be groups that will be trying to swallow up or grab up these LDCs and that there's strength in numbers and that if we combine and our, our resources and work collaboratively uh, there's a potential that we could take on more as the principal shareholder that uh, we could protect our interests as the principal shareholder of Elk. Each of the seven county municipalities in the county of Essex are being requested to petition the provincial government to request Hydro One sell their remaining distribution assets to Elk 
and to EPLC in order to facilitate the creation of a single LDC for all county electric uh, customers and that these recommendations will be passed on to Essex County Council for review, consideration and support. They are seeking this council's support to move forward on that. Thank you, Russ. Any questions? Councillor Caxero. Through your worship uh, to, uh, to Mr. Phillips. So is the suggestion then that uh, Elk and Essex Power would merge or they would stay separate and in their own areas take on the Hydro One uh, customers? Yes, sir. Through you, your worship. The the notion is working shoulder to shoulder. I would tend to believe that there will be ongoing discussions about how to pull it together and merge. But right now it's a matter of working collaboratively. We are not Elk sitting here. You're the principal, the council is the principal shareholder or the community is the principal shareholder of Elk. So it's a matter of dealing with uh, the two communities to see whether or not there is, is an interest in moving this along. Um, it will take that conversation, but right now they're only encouraging uh, before the assets are sold off, make sure that there's a that their message is strong in front of the province that we're interested in looking at that at, at that potential. Uh, continuance. Um, who is is there only one municipality's primary shareholder of Essex Power? There's prime th three shareholders. Four shareholders. Four. Thank you. Okay, I, I, um, I, I mean, certainly I, I, I'm in favor of um, our LDC uh, that we're the primary shareholder of Elk uh, taking on the, um, the uh, Hydro One area uh, of service as our own. When it gets into, um, I guess, uh, mergers, I, I was always cautious in my previous term because I sat on Elk uh, of, um, uh, of getting into joint ventures with Essex Power. I would still be cautious of that. Uh, if that is the only way to maybe put pressure on the government uh, to uh, relinquish the uh, Hydro One service areas to the LDCs versus selling them to uh, private companies, uh, I guess if that, that's the last ditch of effort, then I, I would be in favor of that because uh, I do see it as a big issue going forward. If that percentage of Hydro One, and I realize I, I think uh, the number was no more than 10% to any one proponent, uh, it would still be very dramatic if 60% of Hydro One was sold off to, to private uh, companies. It would cause the, the Hydro rates to, to increase more than what they're set to increase, for sure. These guys are after profit, and it's the likes of Warren Buffett that are, are interested in, in the, those commodities. So, um, whatever we have to do to to keep uh, Hydro One out of out of those hands, I, I would be in favor of. Thank you, sir. Councillor Vokes, uh, Councillor Bundy. Thank you, Worship. Obviously, in terms of the recommendations and and the direction we need to go to alleviate some of the financial strains as it relates to to power. Um, we should be supporting the recommendations as, and obviously taking on the provincial government of the day, it will be a large task at hand to convince them to do what the initiatives spell out to do. So I will be supporting the, the three recommendations as set forward. Yes, sir. Councillor Bundy. Thank you. Although I agree with Councillor Vokes, I'm not opposed to any of the recommendations. I just, um, and I thank you, Mr. Phillips, for bringing this to our attention tonight, but I have just now come across this issue and I, would, I personally would like a little bit more time to process it. It does seem very logical if the province is going to sell Hydro One off that this is the next steps that we should take. But um, I don't know, and I don't know how time sensitive this is. Maybe this is why it's falling on our lap now. I guess I'm a little bit confused as to which, whether this is an emergency motion, uh, a notice of motion for the next council meeting, like like is standard uh, policy or uh, an emergency time sensitive motion that we have to deal with tonight because I would like a little bit more time. Uh, being an ELK board member, you know, I'd like to, to talk at that board level and see 
what, uh, you know, what implications this has for elk. I would prefer to pass this at our June meeting rather than tonight. I'm glad we have it here, but um, that's my thoughts. I'm not prepared to support it either way right now because I'm just seeing it now. Mr. Phillips. Thank you, through you, Your Worship. It is, the timing on it is, uh, it seems rushed. It was rushed to us in attending the meeting. It was, we were called to the meeting fairly, fairly soon. Uh, it came to our attention, as I said, the mayor and I met last Tuesday after the deadline for the for this agenda. Therefore, I couldn't do, couldn't get it into the agenda even, um, other than to add it in as as uh, new business. We don't have all of the details. I appreciate that. Um, the concern I think was that the town of Tecumseh did Mayor McNamara did put it on the table with his council uh, last Wednesday, uh, last Tuesday evening. And I think it was, it was their plan was to take it forward to the county thereafter. So they were asking simply for this council support moving forward. But I, I certainly appreciate your concerns, Councillor Bondi. I, I too, it, there's a lot of uh, depth here, but, uh, and a lot of concern. And like Russ said, I was at a meeting and Mr. Tracy was at that meeting. He asked me if we would be able to sit down to come see and discuss this in in less than a week I had turned it over to Russ to set up a, an appointment because you know Gary is very busy and uh, within a week we had this meeting like he said last Tuesday so put, rather do we have to push forward really fast I don't think so personally because like he said we'll, we're going to take it to County Council and everyone's and hopefully a letter or needs to be sent and everything so I don't think it's really an urgent, urgent, but it, it's, it's urgent. Councilor Vokes. Thank you for allowing me to talk one more time briefly on this. And, and don't forget the recommendations are, are just to initiate the process and encourage the government. And we're going to be working with the province on this. And, and you know, Councilor Bondi, the wheels of the, the, the provincial government of the day don't, don't grind quickly. So you'll have lots of time to digest it and figure out what's going on with it. And all of us will actually probably grow bored of it by the time it comes to a conclusion. Further. Thank you, Russ. We need to receive and Councillor Bondi, Councillor Bjorkman. Any questions? All in favor? Motion carries. Councillor Kexero, Dunn Road parking along the walkway. Councillor Kexero. Through your worship. It was brought to my attention and, and I have noticed as I, I live out in that area. Um, along our, our walkway that's been established uh, in the section from, uh, from the village to Gore, um, it seems though people have uh, taken up our, our walkway as, as parking spots uh, occasionally. Um, certainly that, that's not the purpose of, of the walkway. Uh, and um, I was wondering if we could entertain possibly putting up some signage to indicate such. Uh, it, it should be pretty clear that, that that is a walkway, but for those that think it's a parking lot, uh, possibly some signage, um, and if, if need be, I guess some enforcement uh, along there uh, would be appropriate, I think. Um, it, it was brought to my attention by some residents uh, that live uh, on the outskirts of, uh, of the village. Um, this is happening, I've seen it on two or three occasions, probably about a kilometer north of the village. So it's not right in, in the village per se, uh, which would, I, I guess, make more sense if people have uh, uh, guests at their house and they need extra parking. But this is happening like kind of out in the middle of nowhere beside the field, so. Um, I guess I, I wanted to bring that to council's attention and see what uh, what council might wish to do with that issue. The uh, the second thing that I had, or I don't know, would you like to deal with that issue first? Yes, sir. Okay, fine. Chris, through your worship, uh, I think what we can do, and I, and I think it's a good idea, is uh, change our parking bylaw. And I think the county has done this as well. I'm just getting. Um, a copy of the verbiage they used in their parking bylaw to not allow parking on paved shoulders. Uh, as we move into the uh, 
the seawatts and the active transportation and we expand our paved shoulders in particularly in particular on County Road 50 and Dunn Road uh, and also on Erie uh, County Road 13 I think it would be prudent to have a no parking on the paved shoulder uh, incorporated into the bylaw uh, what we're going to do as well on Dunn Road is put up the seawatts signage which will also help deter people from parking there if they notice that this is a uh, um, you know a sea watch trail um, and then um, with within the urban section which uh, I've heard uh, complaints as well there's some parking there occasionally I think like you said for uh, additional guests and whatnot we may be able to erect some uh, no parking signs there once the bylaws changed but um, that's something I can bring back in June as a, as a report for council to vote on thank you sir I I'm comfortable with that <clears throat> My, uh, my second item is uh, with regards to uh, um, a discussion I had with Councillor Bondi. Um, recently, uh, police service board members were uh, afforded the opportunity to take a, a ride along with, uh, with the officers. Um, Councillor Bondi expressed interest, so I, I did ask. Um, and in speaking to uh, Tracy Blanchard, uh, she said that for any members of council that wished to do the same, to, to have the opportunity to do a ride along uh, with an officer, they could contact uh, Tracy via email and uh, express their interest and, uh, and set up an appointment. So her, her email is uh, tracy.blanchard at opp.ca. Tracy is spelt without an E, T-R-A-C-Y. Uh, Blanchard is how it sounds, and if anybody would would like to contact her that uh, that's on council that is not on the police services board, she'd be more than happy to set up uh, uh, an event for you guys to go out for a ride in the in the car. You'd ride alongside of an officer while while on duty, so there could be calls while you're with them. Can I bring a beer with me? Um, <laughs> you can't, you just can't. <laughs> Uh, s certainly, you, you wear a vest. It's it's uh, like your second person in the car. So it, it's it was pretty interesting. Thank you, Bill. Just before I ask for adjournment, I'd be remiss if I didn't ask our youth reps if they had anything they would like to put forward to us. Any anything? I would just like to announce that at uh, Essex High School, we recently elected our incoming prime minister for the 2015-2016 school year, Carly Davison, who's sitting right over there, and she will be taking over for me as the youth member from Essex as of July. Thank you very much. <laughs> and it was Carly... Davison. Thank you very much. Council votes. Uh, I'm going to ask the indulgence of council just if I could just make a, a not so much new business, but just an announcement if I could, prior to concluding tonight's council meeting. I, I, I just want to refresh the memory of everybody on council that this Sunday, May 24th at, at 2 p.m. at the base of the Priscilla Spitfire plane, we will be unveiling the Veterans Memorial Wall. And there's over 1,400 RAF and RCAF veterans uh, enlisted onto that wall. And uh, as a matter of fact, I think they're even working on it out there tonight as I speak. And uh, uh, I, anybody who could come out and recognize and honor our veterans, it certainly would be appreciated. The anticipation that the numbers will be numerous this weekend uh, out there. So uh, again, that's May 24th at the Priscilla Spitfire plane at 2 p.m. Thank you. Thanks for that, Randy. Looking for adjournment. Deputy Mayor Malosh, Contract Tax Arrow. Any questions? All in favor? Have a great evening, everyone.